Well, good morning, everybody. So glad to see you on this Tuesday morning. I'm really uh, excited about starting up services again this coming Sunday, and so I hope you'll be able to join us. But if not, uh, if you don't feel like it's right for you at this time, that's okay. We will still be live streaming the 930 service. That is uh, the McQueenie Classic service. So we'll be live streaming that at 930, and so hope you'll be able to join us online. Also, I want to give a kind of a shout out, a thank you to everyone that came out on uh, Sunday evening to join us for the prayer walk at the church. It was just a beautiful evening, and uh, it was just such a blessing to see all the people just moving around the church property, praying to the Lord. And uh, I know that God has heard our prayers, and so I'm excited about uh, what God is going to do. I also want to just say thanks to the, uh, our student ministry that met uh, Sunday evening also to pack some gift uh, items for teachers at McQueenie Elementary School. And uh, you guys have done a great job of ministry during this time. And so I want to say thank you for the work that you're doing. And I know that those teachers are going to be really blessed uh, to receive those gifts and those thank you cards. So uh, yesterday evening, uh, I walked outside. It was already dark and uh, went out in my front yard for a moment. And the, the wind was really blowing uh, strongly out in the yard and uh, literally blowing the trees. And, and I could just uh, feel that, that cool uh, breath across my face, just a beautiful moment, and uh, made me stop and think for a moment about that passage of scripture that talks about the Holy Spirit is like the wind, and uh, the scripture says that, you know, you don't know where the wind comes from or where it goes, but you know that it's there because you can see the effect of its presence, and the scripture says that the Holy Spirit is like that. Uh, you know, we, we may not be able to see him, he may not be seen with our eyes and heard with our ears, but we know that he's there and we experience his presence in our lives. And so this morning, I just want to take a moment to share a thought with you that we are so blessed that God has loved us so much that he has given us the gift of the Holy Spirit. Uh, <clears throat> we are told in Ephesians chapter 1, verses 13 and 14, let's read it. In him you also, when you heard the word of truth, the gospel of your salvation, and believed in him, were sealed with the promised Holy Spirit, who is the guarantee of our inheritance, until we acquire possession of it to the praise of his glory. So the scripture says we received the gift of the Holy Spirit, and we were sealed in the Holy Spirit uh, as we received him into our lives. And it's through the indwelling power and presence of the Holy Spirit that we are brought into a, a friendship, a relationship uh, with God. You know, the Bible tells us that, uh, that in our, when we're still in our sins, that we were enemies of God. But now through the presence and the power of the Holy Spirit, we are made to be friends of God. And the scripture tells us some interesting things about the Holy Spirit, uh, some characteristics of his personality. Uh, for instance, in Acts chapter 13, uh, in Acts chapter 13, verse uh, 2, it, it tells us that the Holy Spirit speaks. The Holy Spirit speaks, and it says, while they were worshiping the Lord, and we're, we're talking about the church in Antioch, and it says that while they were worshiping the Lord and fasting, it says the Holy Spirit said. So the Holy Spirit spoke to the church in Antioch, and it says, set apart for me Barnabas and Saul for the work to which I have called them. And so the scripture says that the Holy Spirit does speak. And then in Ephesians chapter 4, verse 30, we learn that the Holy Spirit feels emotions like grief. Listen to this, Ephesians 4, 30. And do not grieve the Holy Spirit of God by whom you were sealed for the day of redemption. And so we know that the Holy Spirit experiences uh, those kind of emotions like grief. And, and I hope with, with that the same would be true for joy. And so uh, we know that the Holy Spirit feels. And then in Romans chapter 8, verses 26 and 27, um, it, it teaches us or tells us that the Holy Spirit is our helper and that he prays for us. And indeed, the Greek word is uh, the paraclete, one who comes alongside. So, so listen to Romans 8, 26 and 27. It says, like, likewise, the Spirit helps us in our weakness. For we do not know what to pray for as we ought, 
but the Spirit himself intercedes for us uh, with groanings too deep for words. And he who searches hearts knows what is the mind of the Spirit, because the Spirit intercedes for the saints according to the will of God. So friendship with God through the Holy Spirit is one of God's uh, greatest gifts, one of God's greatest blessings for us. Now, there's one more quality, one more characteristic that I want to mention, and that is that uh, the Holy Spirit will not force a relationship upon us. Now, uh, obviously, I had an amen from uh, my dog, Millie, just now, and uh, we may continue to get some uh, response from her as well. Uh, I think she's in there trying to beg some food off of Donna. Uh, but, but let's, I digress, let's continue. We know that the Holy Spirit uh, doesn't force a relationship on us. In other words, if we are listening, you know, if we have ears to hear, we're listening, then the Holy Spirit will speak to us. You know, if we have eyes to see and we're looking, then the Spirit of God will reveal to us and, and will, if we have a heart that's open for revelation from the Lord, then we know that the Holy Spirit will work to uh, give us eyes to see and ears to hear what he's wanting to show us. We also know that if we ask God to guide us and direct our path, if we're praying that, if we're asking for the help of the Holy Spirit, he will help us. But he's not going to force us. He's not going to, to uh, insist upon that. In fact, the scripture tells us in Revelation 3.20 that that Jesus stands at the door and knocks, and if anyone will open the door, he will come in. We, we, the same is true of the, the work of the Holy Spirit. We need to be willing to receive. We need to open the door to him. So I just wanted to encourage you this morning to just be conscious that you are never, if you're a child of God, you are never alone. You are never without the power and the presence of the Holy Spirit. Now, you know, there have been some times in my life I've had to really stop and really realize that that sometimes I think the Holy, for the Holy Spirit being with me, uh, may not be uh, a walk through the, the flowers. You know what I'm saying? Uh, you know, there have been so many times that I've grieved the Holy Spirit, times that I know that I've angered the Holy Spirit. And so um, we need to just want to, we want to be conscious of his presence with us and just realize what a precious gift uh, we have in the presence and the power of the Holy Spirit. So I want to encourage you, challenge you today. Uh, seek his seek his face. Uh, in fact, how many times have we prayed to God to tell God how we feel about something? Maybe one of the things we might do today is when we pray, just ask the Holy Spirit, how does he feel? Uh, how does he feel about uh, our lives which he indwells? Okay, so let's let's spend that time today. Let's seek his face. Let's spend some time right now in prayer. Heavenly Father, we thank you for this time. We thank you for the blessings of the Holy Spirit. Lord, we thank you for the work that he does in our lives. We thank you for his guidance. We thank you for his presence. We thank you for the, the closeness and the friendship and the relationship we have uh, with the Holy Spirit in our lives. Lord, we ask you to watch over us today. And we pray, God, that we might draw closer to your presence. And we pray all of these things today in Jesus' mighty name. Amen. God bless you. I pray that you have a really wonderful day today. Look forward to seeing you again on this Thursday morning.